It's obviously the authority of college football, Ty Schmidt, who is Pete Thamel. Is that accurate? Uh, so, so yes, that is correct, Pat. Uh, initially, I planned on going as the Hulkster, the Hulkamaniac. Uh, ordered a, a very nice costume, <laughs> spent a lot of money on that costume. A little bit of snafu along the way. Uh, and, and I believe, I want to say Oxford, California. So uh, that costume did not get here. So I said, you know, what the hell? I'm going to go as my favorite college football insider, and not just my favorite college football insider, but my favorite insider as a whole, wow. Pete Thamel. Pete! 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 Uh, Pete, it's a big day for college football, obviously, because the things that keep unraveling. I believe we'll be talking to another Pete Thamel today at some point. Excited for you two to have a nice interaction. <laughs> I'm uh, really looking forward to that one. Uh, Want to get a, a, a couple more, you know, tips uh, and, and kind of inside info, considering you know Connor Stallions and the, and the Michigan situation, because as we know, you know, the hotbed that's going on in Michigan right now, it kind of it, it's continuing to heat up, and, and and we'll see, you know, a little bit more of a vested interest as well with. <laughs> Potentially Jim Harbaugh maybe, you know, leaving Michigan and going to the Packers. Now. You're saying heat up. It's almost like a Traeger, like it's starting to roast. It's been roasting now for Ooh. like two weeks, isn't it? Yeah, it's been percolating a little bit. Uh, maybe, you know, started as, as you know, uh, like a Kingsford, you know, just regular coals on there. But, yeah, it is kind of like <laughs> a Traeger now. And, and those pellets are, are, are getting very, very hot and kind of reaching uh, the zeitgeist. Of but how's the, meat? <laughs> how's the meat, though, that's inside that Traeger grill? Well, I guess we'll find out uh, because, you know, Michigan <laughs> – <laughs> they they should, you know, I mean, this is maybe Jim Harbaugh's best team at Michigan. Uh, I don't think anything's going to happen until after the season. So we'll see if that team can kind of, you know, ride the ebbs and flows like you guys mentioned a little bit and and <laughs> and, uh, and win a national championship. Ooh. And then we'll kind of, we'll <laughs> th then the chickens will come home to roost, if you will. Nice. <laughs> yes, they will. Yes, they will. Oh, Happy you're here, Pete. Where you going, That's Pete? the authority. If he doesn't know, nobody does. He's old school coach. I love everything about it. You have to hate that in the NFC North, especially with where you guys are sitting, Pete. Yeah, absolutely. But it's also hard to hate a guy like Dan Campbell because we, you know, we had all our fun when he first got hired. You know, this guy's a big dumb dipshit. He's a doofus. You know, everything he says, he sounds like a moron. You know, we're we're gonna laugh at him. We're gonna make fun of him. And then they stunk. You know, and we kind of we kept saying that kind of stuff. <laughs> Um, but yeah, at this point, you know, uh, again, you know, they got their guys in there. And I think one of the big things that, you know, not a lot of people are talking about that actually matters. He played for the Lions. So he understands, you know, like, hey, this this team sucked when I was here. OK, I lost a lot of football games. I know what this means to this city and these people and and all that kind of stuff. And then obviously you hit on a couple draft picks, you know, you get you and and people are are kind of, you know, casting aspersions and throwing stones at you for that as well. But you hit on those draft picks and those those guys come in and they make it an immediate impact and then yeah sure it doesn't hurt that the division absolutely stinks right now and the boogeyman you know Aaron Rodgers isn't there anymore but I mean Jared Goff's playing his best football uh you know the that offensive line's tough that defensive line's tough and physical I mean they d mentioned it you know they they really are kind of molded in the image of Dan Campbell and it just it just kind of took him a little bit of time to get rolling is, you, is this your best one yet you think <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you know, I mean, I've, I've, you know, kind of just in the office been doing Pete Thamel a little bit for the guys and everything, but, you know, I've really had an opportunity to kind of, you know, take it to, to center stage. But, uh, yeah, I'm, kind of, I'm, enjoying, I'm enjoying doing it right now for sure. Yeah. Just the way he speaks because he's so it, intelligent. His yes. vocabulary. Yeah. The words. In the words. Yeah. You were doing. We told Pete before we went live today. Hey, Pete, somebody's dressing up as you today. And he said, who? And I said, the talented one. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if he knew what that meant or not, but I'm very thankful that it is Halloween and that we have Pete Thamel in the oh, office. Yeah. It does sound exactly like him when Sweet. he's talking. You don't have any of the sources, any of the, <laughs> any of the ability to reach out to whoever, whenever. No, definitely not. But you certainly sound like him. Well, I, I appreciate that, and I do want Pete to know, you know, this is coming from a, a deep-seated, very deep-down place of uh, admiration. Uh, in my loins, in, you know, down in my gut, um, it's, it's just I, re I respect the hell out of Pete Thamel. Every time we see him when we go somewhere, I, I immediately, where's Pete Thamel at? I got to go shake his hand, you know, mm -hmm. talk to him, see how the family is, how he's doing. So, yeah, I, I just want Pete to know that this is... This is a lot of admiration that I have for him, and that's why I decided to kind of, you know, dress up as him for Halloween. Okay, well, we appreciate Pete. I appreciate yep. you, and I don't know how Pete's going to feel. We'll talk to him in a couple hours. He should like it. He's the first. Yeah. Just like when McDaniel learned that somebody dressed up as him yeah. for Halloween. Pete, you're the authority now. Bingo. This is what happens. <laughs> this right. is what you're. You're big name. Yeah. You're super. Could have been Shefty. 
Could have been, yeah. Could have been Rappaport. Yeah, sure. Woj. Could have been, could have been Shams. Mm-hmm. Could have been. Yeah. Could have been all these. But instead, you're the authority of college football, Pete Thamel. Yeah, there was only one choice, and it was pretty obvious. Is it because you sound exactly like him, potentially? Um, I don't know. I mean, I listen to that College Game Day podcast a lot. And we Again, we all love Pete Thamel. So, you know, basically anytime he opens his mouth, I'm beelining to a TV to make sure I can hear what he says. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I, that that could be part of it. Sure. I, I didn't, Honestly, I had no idea how it was going to go over when I when I decided to do it today. I'm, I'm glad you guys are enjoying it thus far. We are enjoying yeah, it. Very much. We are, we I don't are know how the people at home feel Very much. Very, very, very much. Fun. Pete is the one. Yeah, well, yeah, I can't wait to yeah. hear Pete. How do you think Pete will respond to a Pete Thamel impersonation happening for three hours on an ESPN play? Well, I hope he thinks it's pretty good, and I hope that he enjoys it, because like I said, you know, I mean, I uh, we're not, I'm, I'm not, you know, throwing stones at Pete. I'm not, you know, trying to, trying to be a jerk or trying to, you know, jerk his chain or anything like that. I'm trying to kind of Pay an homage to who, who I yeah, believe. Yeah, trying to complete other jerk. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah exactly. Uh, if you will, yeah, you know, jerk his, his pee-pee a little bit. You know, I mean, I w- <laughs> won't say that to him, but that, yeah, that's kind metaphorically. of... Metaphorically. Yes, metaphorically speaking, of course. Right, correct. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Metaphorically. Make him feel good about himself. Right, mm-hmm. right. I'll be honest. Um, I, I really got to kind of commend AJ because we remember last year, you know, he... He 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 kind of gave us this song and dance of yeah I bought a five hundred dollar mask. Um, the mask looked like shit. It was a terrible mask. It was a terrible costume. And you know he kind of tried to dangle that carrot in front of us like oh I sp- I spent all this money on this costume. It's it's really great, but it sucked. It was terrible. It was one of the worst costumes we'd ever seen. And now and now he looks absolutely unbelievable. Amazing. I mean comeback player of the year. Comeback yeah, player of the year. Come, comeback player of the year for Both Halloween. Bravo AJ. Bravo from one P- Peter Parker, obviously, to Peter. Pete Thamel, one Pete to another. I uh, didn't think that would be happening today, but uh, it is Halloween. It's very spooky. It's very fun. I'm glad to be here. Pat. Are you having a good time, Pete? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the kind of issues I'm running through right now is uh, my ear has quite a bit of uh, fluid and whatnot in it, so it keeps popping, kind of leaking down the side of my face and uh, <laughs> hurts a little bit, but, you know, we're, we're, we're going to battle adversity and we're going to get through uh, just like, you know, Michigan football is doing right now with, you know, kind of all the uh, the tricks and gamuts that they're having to run through, you know, uh, with seemingly the, the, the sky falling, the clouds falling on top of them. Yeah, it's crazy. The NCAA showed up at their house on Halloween in uh, Trick or Treat, and uh, Michigan was like, we got both three. Here's a treat for you. And then we got a couple tricks as well. You should see, we got a guy standing on CMU sidelines. Mm-hmm. He's on Central Michigan University oh. sidelines scouting Michigan State, allegedly with sunglasses on at night and a hat laying low, <laughs> just sneaking in. What's that guy saying over there? It's it feels like a real elaborate plan out of the Michigan folks there, uh, Authority. Yeah, it absolutely does. And I don't know if, you know, it's going to be uh, like a done deal or anything like that. But I think the easiest way to kind of put this whole thing to bed would be for Jim Harbaugh to maybe, you know, just make Connor Stallions disappear. Now, I'm not suggesting anything one That guy way served or our country. I know he killed? did. I know he did. And and, <laughs> and I appreciate that. You know, oorah and all that kind of stuff. He was a Marine, I believe. Um but, you know, at the end of the day, this guy is writing a 500 to 600 page manifesto and kind of, I mean, he, he's the one who's, you know, kind of getting Jim Harbaugh in hot water. I don't, I don't necessarily know if Jim Harbaugh knew what was going on. So uh, just, just a suggestion again, you know, I'm, I'm not saying anything one way or, the, or another, but I think maybe Jim Harbaugh wants this to go away. Uh, you know, maybe he makes Connor Stallions go away too. Well, we hope that is not the case, obviously. This is just football we're talking about. It sounds like you're talking about something much much more serious, but you are the authority. Yeah, no, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not suggesting. Maybe, you know, let him go be a, a graduate assistant at Illinois or, you know, um, Wyoming or Air Force or get him the hell out of the Big Ten. Air Force oh. undefeated as well. Pete Thamel, you ever meet a 90s dope boy? Well, I have seen the acclaimed film that D-Bot is portraying paid in full. I believe, uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, Mackay Pfeiffer's in that one. Correct. And then I Money think um, the man who, who portrayed, uh, you know, uh, his name is escaping my mind right now, but he was in Remember the Titans. <laughs> It was also Avon Barksdale. So the the guy who, you know, left side, strong side, um, I believe he's in paid in full right. as well. Cameron. Uh, Attitude up. reflects leadership, Captain? Uh, correct. Yeah. Julius yeah. Campbell. Julius I, Campbell. I'll Thank tell you, you what authority. We knew that you knew. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, I'm a pretty cultured guy. You know, I know guys in Miami. I know guys in South Central. I know guys in Washington. What? I know guys in New York. Boston, obviously, my stomping grounds. Um, How about the Dakotas? Dakotas, yeah, I could probably, you know, um, I could probably call a guy or two, you know. That basketball coach there probably or something like that. Well, yeah, I mean, at one time, yeah, I knew every, you know, assistant coach. 
coach, staffer, uh, head basketball coach of basically every um, you know, Division One program in the country. So, you know, a couple, you know, weeks ago when you guys were at Notre Dame, I mean, out of nowhere, boom, hey guys, Michael Shrewsbury, you know, head coach of Notre Dame, good buddy of mine. So, so yeah, I mean, y- you want me to, you know, make a, a phone call or two, get a guy on the line? Uh, yeah, I could probably figure that out. I do believe that this is this is one of the most this shows for us shows in the history of all time. Yep. But AJ, Pete Thamel, I don't think Pete knows this. This is why I want the Pete chance to start a college game day. The more you meet him, most interesting man maybe to ever live. Oh, yeah. Maybe to ever live. Knows every – he's an insider – for something that has 130 schools. Insider in the NFL, 32 teams. Okay, 32 teams. Insider for any other sport, 32 teams, roughly. College football has 130 of them. And the coaches get pulled from the 130 Mm -hmm. up to 50 to 40 to 30. You get hired that way. He's got to know everybody. This guy knows every human on earth. It is bananas. Literally every time you see Pete, he's on the phone, you know, talking to a receivers coach somewhere or maybe, you know, a quality control coach or recruiting coordinator. Um, He literally knows everyone in the kind of college football landscape, knows everyone's names, knows their families, knows how they're doing. Uh, Pete Thamel is an absolute weapon. Make no mistake about it. The authority Pete Thamel has a question for Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, Aaron, we had you on a couple weeks ago, and you kind of mentioned, you know, with uh, when it came to Devontae Adams, hey, even when he's not open, he's open. You know, you just got to kind of pepper the football at him. And then, obviously, with the trade deadline being today, um, and then, you know, the the Raiders getting gobsmacked last night by the Lions on Monday Night Football, is there anything that can happen in Vegas for them to kind of right this ship with Devontae? Um because, boy, does it look bad. He's he's pretty pissed off. You know, he's screaming, slamming his helmet, and rightfully so. I mean, you know, they left about 180 yards and two touchdowns out there for him. But do you see there being any world where he gets traded is, is a, you know, kind of a clean start, a uh, new page of the book, the best move for him here? Or uh, do you see a path in which they can kind of right this wrong in Las Vegas with Devontae and Jimmy G? Well, I hope he gets traded. Because we we play him in a couple of weeks, so <laughs> I, I hope uh, I hope he's not there because he's uh, he's still the most dynamic receiver in the league. And uh, you know, obviously, there's some frustration uh, last night. Um, I didn't see the game. I was keeping uh, keeping tabs on it, but uh, we had our, our watch reveal, so I couldn't watch it. Oh, what a see, night! I, I did so see cool. a, I did see a couple of the uh, the opportunities that they had, sure. and uh, I think he was. You know, obviously uh, a little bit upset, but um, he's a very, very valuable player. So whoever is going to want him is going to have to going to have to pay up. I'm sure. I don't know why you would move him because he's a generational talent. But um, you know, hopefully he's. Listen, I, I'd love to see him in a couple weeks if he's there and uh, and catch up, give him a hug. But um, I wouldn't be disappointed if he uh, if he wasn't there when we played him. Everything is potentially a part of the conspiracy, the controversy. And then as you look into it deeper, it's like, yeah, maybe. And I think a lot of it obviously started maybe with some Ohio State people pushing the, because they're hate for Michigan. But now it feels like everybody's like, what the hell is going on up in Michigan? It's been a wild ride these last two weeks with the news as it comes in. Allegedly now we're wearing sunglasses with a hat, hiding in a Central Michigan game, trying to look at Michigan State. I mean, this is... And it might be real. Yeah. We have no idea Maybe. if it's real or not, and we will certainly ask Pete Tamil about it. Absolutely, and I believe during the show, if I'm not mistaken, it came into the you know the group chat. Um, you know, with the stuff with Harbaugh. Uh, he was he was they were going to do an extension, and then they basically said no, we're going to table that until kind of all this stuff um, gets put to bed. I believe they are fast tracking that extension now. If, if what I saw in really? the group text, is, so he's signing an extension. I believe yes. so. Okay, congrats, coach. Wow, that's so, awesome. So unfortunately, he, he he will not be going back to the NFL. Is that what that means? Saving certain franchises from doom and despair. You're talking about the Green Bay Packers. Uh, correct. Yes. Pete, you're from Boston. Well, yeah, but you know, I mean, I, I love the Packers. <laughs> I mean, it's a you know storied tradition, rich tradition, great franchise. So um, they have Coach Lafleur. Yeah, uh, the, I I don't want to put words in Pete Thamel's mouth per se, but um, I think Coach Lafleur stinks. 
And you I'd kind like, of have been putting a lot of words in Pete. Thamus well, mouth. So yeah, like sure, it. but I again, when when Pete comes on the show, I don't want him to be you know gobsmacked by anything that I've I've said. But um, did yeah. you go dictionary.com word of the day? No, I, I I didn't. But um, <laughs> did he say I, I was yeah, I was I was actually listening to the the College Game Day podcast coming in this morning with Pete Thamel and Reese Davis, and he said gobsmacked several times. So I was like, okay, well, I'm <laughs> I'm gonna need to say gobsmacked on the show today and try to you know find creative. Creative and, and and fun ways to kind of work it into a conversation. I believe I've done that. I'm going to try to maybe say it a couple more times when Pete's on the show as well. I'll, I'll be. You think Pete's been watching this? He's on the phone all day every day. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know it. if he has seen any of this. To be honest with you, no I have way. no idea. He's so fucking busy that he doesn't have time for this. So.